I think the message of Ragtime is that change is possible and that you should embrace it rather than try to fight it. That journey of how hard it is to be an immigrant, how hard it is to, um, to arrive in this country, the struggles that you'll experience as you're trying to, uh, to integrate yourself into this new foreign land. There are clearly people who have no money, no political power, and then some people in, in that world who have incredible amounts of power and money. There are so many issues that, uh, that are resonant in the piece that resonate with us today. Um, issues about how we handle class, how we treat African Americans, inequality, issues of like violence and women's liberation. All of that is, is just crammed into this piece. I would say that some characters are resistant to change. The world is always moving forward. Uh, these huge events uh, are happening throughout history, but at the same time, the small actions that you make as an individual have meaning and, and you too can affect history. My name is Austin Haller and I'm the music director for Ragtime at Texas State. So in Ragtime we hear music that represents a number of ethnic groups who we, who we meet in the show with our immigrants who are Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe. We hear some klezmer from the clarinet and from mandolin uh, to give us that feeling of kind of pre-jazz when ragtime and klezmer were uh, musical stylings. And then we hear with our new Rochelle ensemble, we hear a number of waltzes sung by the mother. We also hear kind of classical musical theater. Um, we meet um, African-American characters who are called the Harlem Ensemble in a club in Harlem. So we hear these predominant left-hand piano on beats one and three. And then we hear polyrhythms sometimes in the right hand. So that's our ragtime music. The set is what puts us into 1906. New Rochelle, New York, Harlem. Lower East Side and Atlantic City in Lawrence, Massachusetts. It's what pulls us into uh, into this world. What I did was historical research, 1906 New York. The best way that I was able to address the racial undertones in the play was to pull inspiration from the various areas of New York that we deal with. So we're dealing with the white population, the black population, and the immigrant population. And what I saw was a difference in color and texture. You have the upper crust, the white population, they were this highly polished looking wood. And then you have the black community, which was the strong steel architecture of Harlem. And then the Lower East Side, you have the deteriorating, dirty, brick buildings, the brick tenements that they lived in, and through those, through those three textures is how I've both separated these three worlds, but at the same time brought them together into one for this show. The Model T was first constructed in 1908 by Henry Ford. Um, it was the first car that required one basic system, so they were able to reproduce, and it was an affordable car for people. But even then, you couldn't really afford this car. Whole house, you know, came from this very dirt poor background and was able to both like build himself up, and also takes tremendous pride in that. And I think the car is the manifestation of his sense of achievement at um, being, having enough money and being respected enough by society. The, the car is both a symbol of freedom at the beginning, at, you know, the whole song, The Wheels of a Dream. Uh, he, he merges his, his hopes and dreams for his son 
along with this mechanic idea of where this car will take him and Sarah and their son into the future. Some of the struggles that black women had in the 1900s is that black women were limited in the amount of jobs that they could get. Usually, you'd find a black woman working as a washwoman or someone who tended the house. Or the flip side, she'd be a prostitute making money. Hi, I'm Rachel Webb. I am Sarah's friend in ragtime. Another struggle is the fact that she's not seen as equal to a man. Until we reach that day, some of the lyrics include, we'll never get to heaven until we reach that day. And that day is the day of hope, the day of justice, the day of peace. Social change hasn't really happened. You can't really see hope, justice, and peace. But the fact that she's singing this prayer shows that someone has hope. For Ragtime, the big question in the show is what does it mean to be an American? What is America in general? Is it this beautiful place where we're all striving for success? Is it this beautiful place where it's already been obtained? Or is it this oppressive, darker world that we see develop throughout the play? Hi, I'm uh, Marissa Moniz. I am the costume designer for Ragtime. I started, you know, asking questions about what is America and People often refer to America as this melting pot, and I feel like that isn't quite right, because a melting pot implies that everything kind of blends together and becomes homogenous and the same. To me, America's always been like this giant quilt where there are these like tiny pieces of fabric that still remain the same, that are all kind of like stitched together into one thing. So that's really where I started. I created this, uh, this imagery of the American flag of all of these different swatches of fabric uh, coming together to create one whole image. I feel like this is such an important show to be doing right now. It's still relevant today, and it's the retelling and telling of the issues and problems that were true 100 years ago and are still true today. The immigrants have changed, but the attitudes are still very similar.